Adventures of Uncle Jimmy, a Warner Brothers radio production starring William Farnham. Original story and direction by Edward Lynn. Stewart's office had never seen Robert. She seemed to take an unusual interest in him. She managed to phone every day to see how he was getting along. Strange to say, Florence, rather than being pleased, resented what she called this intrusion on the part of a perfect stranger. But it was more than just petty displeasure. Yes, Uncle. In my own words, I'd say it was just a little feminine intuition working. But what possible harm could Miss Brenton bring to Bobby? I think it's more than kind of her to want to do something for the boy. Yes, it looks all right. Here's a woman who's kindly, thoughtful, who may prove very helpful. The whole setup really looks ideal. Then let's just assume that it is. After all, the world is just full of people who are willing to help each other. If we could only know where they are. Oh, I suppose I should just brush the whole thing out of my mind and really be more than just civil to the girl when she calls. Do that, Mrs. Stewart. After all, none of us want to do anything that will jeopardize Bobby's chances of getting a good job, you know. No, of course not. Oh, well, just forget that I was suspicious of her. I'll try and approach the whole thing with an open mind. Good. Uncle Jimmy! Uncle Jimmy! Hell's gone! Gone? Gone where? I don't know. He wasn't in his house, he isn't in the yard, and Mrs. Jetson hasn't seen him all day. I'm sure he's around somewhere. Well, the dog catcher couldn't have gotten him. First place, he's got a license. Secondly, he's always stayed pretty close to home. Well, don't you think we'd better start looking for him now before it gets dark? Maybe somebody stole him. Or maybe he's eaten some poison meat and is dying, and he can't bark to let us know where he is. Now, now, Johnny, don't let your imagination run away with you. You just go and get washed up, Johnny. By the time dinner's ready, Pal will be home. I think your mummy is right, Johnny. Pal gets hungry around dinner time, just like we do. But, gee, what if he is lost or poisoned? What if he's miles away and just hoping somebody will start looking for him? Well, if Pal isn't here by dinner time, well, oh, I know he will be. Now, just do as Mommy says. Get washed up. And, oh, I think there are a few errands to do. Isn't that right, Mother? Yes, indeed. So hurry along, Johnny, to the bathroom. Well, okay. But just the same, if we never find Pal again, it won't be my fault. Well, I'm sure Johnny's going to be an author someday. He's got such a wonderful imagination. Well, here's one time when I hope that it's just imagination. Wouldn't we all feel just a little foolish if Pal should be lost? Where's Johnny? I sent him to the store for some groceries. Well, hasn't he been gone for an awfully long time? It's getting pretty dark outside. Oh, now stop fretting. Heaven should think this was the first time I sent Johnny to the grocery store. I know, Flory, but look how dark it's getting. And, and... Gee, that smells good. What is it? Swiss steak. Almost done? Yes, almost done. And, Arnold, the, the kitchen is small enough as it is, so... Yeah, uh, say, Flory, what you got in the oven? Gingerbread. And in those covered stewing pans, potatoes, butter beans. Oh, gee, now, is that all the thanks I get for taking such a really husbandly interest in your culinary skills? Yes, Arnold, that's all you get. 
Oh, now, thank you is such a small word, and a, and a kiss is a little gesture that... If that... I say thank you and give you a kiss, will you clear out of the kitchen? Well, it, it, it might be some inducement. All right. Thank you, dear husband. Oh, oh, darling. Arnold, Arnold. Oh, Arnold. <laughs> oh, everything will be ruined. The gingerbread will be turned to a crisp. Oh, and then the oh I'm sorry, dear. In the future, if it's a toss-up between a ruined dinner and making love to the maid, what? I mean my wife, why... <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> You'd think we were just married yesterday. Well, I hope you don't get the idea we're honeymoon. Uh-huh. Here, here now, young man. Calm down. Did I hear somebody call me? I'll say I did. I want to call everybody. You and Mom and Daddy, Dorothy, Brother Robert, Sister Rosalind, Jesson, and... and the inhabitants on the planet Mars. <laughs> well, what's the big news? You'll never guess in a million, trillion years. Never. I, I told you Johnny had an author's mind. Perfect suspense. All right, Johnny, give. Well... Oh, shucks. I forgot the A. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Johnny, you've got us all in suspenders. Better hurry up with the climax. Well, when I was coming back from the store, who should I meet but Pal? I called, Pal, Pal! And he ran to me, and with him was another dog. Another dog? Yes, Daddy. A beautiful big dog like Pal, only shy. Well, kind of shy. She didn't come running like Pal, but stayed a few feet away. Oh, must be a lady dog who belongs to yesterday's generation. Oh, no, Mommy. He's young like Pal. (laughs) Well, what's the upshot? Did Pal follow the lady dog to her home? Heck no. The lady dog followed Pal to our home. Hmm? I I mean, his home. And they're both in the yard. Well, not exactly in the yard, but on the back step. And Pal looks awfully happy. Uh, Johnny, has this uh, uh, lady dog uh, a license? Heck no, Daddy. How could she? She's just a stranger around here. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, I guess we'll have to call the dog catcher. Oh! <laughs> Oh, now, Arnold, excuse me. Aren't you ashamed? Johnny, dear. Daddy was just joking. Of course, now, don't try. No, no, no. I think you've done just about enough damage, Arnold, so just bear moot. Oh, I suppose anything I might say after that would not in any sense be acceptable, so call me when dinner's ready. Daddy didn't mean it. Now, please don't cry, Johnny. That was mean for Daddy to say. Awfully mean. Well, your father's the practical joker of the family, so just excuse him. Mommy... Can Pal's lady friend stay with us? Of course, Johnny. We'll just make her one of the family. Oh, you see? Now, isn't that great? Oh, boy, I'll say it is. Gee, I love you, Mommy. <laughs> Here's a great big kiss. Ooh, now, Johnny stewed my hair. I'm going out and tell Pal that it's all right. And I know it'll make him happy. And her, too. <laughs> this, of all the impulsive, sentimental, foolish children... I don't know who he takes after. If you just take time to think, Mrs. Stewart, (laughs) I'd hate to offer you three guesses. Does it mean so much for you to adopt Rosalind, Mrs. Jensen? Uncle Jimmy... You not being a woman, you can't know what goes on in a woman's mind. The yearning and longing in her heart. Well, those yearnings and longings may yet be satisfied. You know, I'm not entirely sure that Florence Stewart will win that battle with her pride. They say what one law is another's game. I don't think Mrs. Stewart could ever be what I'd at least try to be to Rosalind. My whole being just wrapped up in that girl... Why, lately, I'm just living for her. I understand. Two weeks will certainly be for the best. Reckon it'll be for the best. The best for Florence Stewart. Who knows? It may work out so perfectly that that it'll be the best, the most wonderful thing for the two of you. What's mine is mine. And what's Mrs. Stewart's is her own. But life has given her enough as it is. But not too much of what you are so wonderfully blessed with. She has so little. In fact, hardly any at all. Humility. Uh, These aren't my words. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But they shall, and they will. And all the good things that are on the earth. Oh, Uncle Jim. I do want Rosalind so bad. (laughs) 
Rosalind, dear, are you looking forward to next week? Next week? Why just next week? Bobby will be allowed to see you five minutes the first day. Five minutes? Uncle Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great news? Just the greatest in the world. It's been so long. It seemed like an eternity. Uncle Jimmy knew. And he's so proud of his two children. I could be even more happy if, if this hadn't happened to me. Rosalind, dear, all of us go through life with some affliction or other. If it doesn't appear on the surface, we harbor it in our soul or deep in our hearts. Like Mrs. Judson, for instance. I know she suffered, has suffered for years. But she's been so patient and so fine and so brave. I was hoping that by now some of the suffering, perhaps most of it, was gone. Now, because Mrs. Stewart hasn't given her decision yet, I suppose for the moment it's even worse for Mother Judson. Yes, dear, it is. It happens so seldomly that we can heal a broken heart or take the grave, deep wound out of a soul. But with physical afflictions like yours, why, there's always hope. Hope. I think I've lived on hope since I was a little girl. Hope and dream. You know, most of us live on anticipation. Today, our times are so terrible that we skip it entirely and start living in tomorrow. And then when tomorrow catches up with us, it's not any better than today. I know, Uncle Jimmy. And the right way to live is each day for itself. And make all the dark corners bright ones. The sorrows, the joys, the trials, lessons. How I wish that I could. Ah, don't we all? I've lived longer than you, Rosalind, and I still can't do it every day. Oh, uh, Bobby wanted me to tell you about Miss Brenton, the personnel director of Father Stewart's office. I hear she's taken an interest in Bobby, and as soon as he's well enough, wants to meet him and see if he might fit into any future opening. Yes. I hope you'll both meet someday soon so you can thank her in person for being so thoughtful. Anything that anyone does for Bobby makes me so happy. And being his wife, I really feel that they're doing it for me, too. Will anything ever happen in the life of Rosalind and Bobby that will make Rosalind change her sweet and gentle philosophy? And what will Mrs. Stewart's decision be in regard to Mrs. Jensen's desire to adopt Rosalind. 